Hi, this is Mark Hope. Has out-of-control inflation, gas prices, and grocery costs wrecked your wallet? Then check into automated day trading with Trading Made Easy. Trading Made Easy has spent five years helping people put cash in their pockets with their simple-to-use day trading software. So if you're ready to leave that 9-to-5 job behind, visit TradingMadEasy.com or call 800-971-4160 to sign up for a free live training seminar right now. That's TradingMadEasy.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame. Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. Oh, yeah. It's the show so nice. We're doing this twice, too. Here on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM. It is the Mark Hoke Show. I'm Mark Hoke. Thank you for being with us for a bonus hour of wrestling. Can't beat that. Andrew Fish Fain. You did not just bust out an Enzo Amore. No, I didn't try it. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. But, of course, Fish, if you want to hear Fish and I tomorrow night, by the way, we co-host the Monday night edition of Sports X Radio here on KDWN. Fish is the main man, of course. I get to drown in the fish tank with him. So tune in and catch us. Believe in the process. Yeah, be here at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Check us out on SportsX Radio, filling in for Ken Thompson on Mondays. And we'll now, talk about the O-R-I-O-L-E-S. Oh, I could talk about the O-R-I-O-L-E-S right now as they have taken two from Houston or charging for that wild card spot. And, of course, from future stars of wrestling, Joe DeFalco. And, of course, if you want to learn to be a wrestler, referee, manager. I do. Whatever. Or just check out some great wrestling. Go to fswvegas.com. Joe, hey, got anything going on? What's coming up for you? Uh, we actually do next Sunday. Uh, I was not aware of uh, All Out. So uh, we have Chris Bay, and he wasn't able to do the Saturday, so we were going to do a special Sunday edition. And then I was like, oh, you know, All Out, and our fans are AEW fans, so... Uh, we're moving our show to 2 p.m., so it'll be over by 4, which will give people plenty of time. Uh, we're actually also trying to see about possibly having a viewing party right after our show of AEW All Out. So still putting all that together. Oh, that'd be great. So Yeah, I figure you get to see some of the local guys and things like that, and then you get to see some uh, former uh, FSW talent. Joe, we ought to... On the, on the AEW show. we got to set up a little broadcast down there. That'd be fun. Yeah. I, I enjoy that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Definitely an idea. We will talk. All right. So we kind of hit AEW pretty hard in the first hour of the show. So let's head on over to WWE. And I, I want to mention this story before we get too deep into what was going on but it was just funny because it ties into what we were discussing earlier with the atmosphere of AEW and what's going on with WWE now that Vince McMahon is gone and there was a very interesting story on Cultaholic and uh, Mike Johnson from PW Insider had talked about this saying there is quote renewed hope and pride about working for the company within certain WWE departments the recent change has been described as massively night and day. And so it's often been said Vince would constantly and heavy handedly re- be relaying instructions during TV tapings and pay-per-views. And that th- the staff no longer sees Mondays and Fridays as being the quote worst day on the job. And another person said it's allowed to feel like it's fun to work here. My how Very things excited. change. That is that is incredibly interesting. That especially from the secretaries. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, would you would you go through a, a year affair with Vince McMahon to get a nice three million dollar check? I would. I would. 
<laughs> Wait, did you say you wouldn't fish? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I, I, I'm not dealing with the genetic jackhammer. Hey, you know everybody's got a price. Bro. Everybody's got a price. But it, but I find it interesting that we went from the familial atmosphere in AEW, and now all of a sudden the black clouds seem to have lifted from WWE now that Vince is out of there. Yeah, it's floated over to AEW. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's the bizarre part. Is it, it Like I said, the tables have turned from, and Joe said it, from just like two, three months ago. Yeah, Joe, what are you hearing from your contacts in oh, WWE about um, what's going on? First off, I'm hearing uh, that AEW is about to make a big announcement soon that uh, Vince McMahon will be all elite. But... <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? I, you know, you want to make a splash. That's how you do it at All Out. <laughs> Holy God. Could, oh, could you imagine no chance in hell getting played? Oh. He gets to walk in and he gets on the microphone and tells CM Punk that he's fired. That would be hilarious, but yeah, that that would now that would draw. That would that, See, would, that would get some attention. Know. But uh, that's why I'm the number one booker in Vegas. There you go. That's why we have you on the show, and that's why. Well, it, I would say in America, you're the number two booker in America because Booker T is the number one booker. That, that's true. <laughs> now, what was the question you asked me? Because I... what are you hearing about what's going on in WWE? How's everybody doing up there? Uh, well, uh, Carrying Cross is doing very well. He said. He should be happy. Yeah, I haven't you know. seen him, though, since his really, I mean, he had a promo the week after the attack on Drew, but I haven't really seen much of him. Yeah, well, he did another promo this week. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He's getting paid for promo. Yeah, there you go. Hey, whatever works. That's, that's why he's doing really good. Well, I'm going to say, which is funny, which is funny because Vince didn't let him do promos at all. No, of course. And it's like I said, you know, he's doing the promos that he's always done that got him his jobs in Impact, NXT, and AAA, and everywhere he went. And it was like, hmm. Like, I guess they were trying to establish the Scarlet character and maybe save him for the main roster, and then they buried him, obviously, on the main roster. And it's going to be interesting to see, you know, he's been back, you know, what, three, four weeks, and Clash of the Castle's happening, haven't heard anything. You know, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to get involved in the main event. You know, he keeps talking about Drew McIntyre. Going to be a schmoz. You know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the dynamic of what happens. Does, you know, he help Drew win the title? Does he cost Drew the title? I I have to believe without having any knowledge because, you know, I don't think he knew when I talked to him. And he said he's pretty much not made aware of things till very you know close to the uh the time frame so it's going to be interesting to see because they're they have to utilize them in some way you know and one thing you mentioned about cross's promos and you know fish uh, you know we were there when he wrestled his first match when he got released from wwe in that complete fiasco and not only do i remember the match well that he had with jacob foul too but what he said afterward, I mean, if you were sitting in that audience and you didn't feel like you became a fan of, even more of a fan of Cross if you weren't, or you know, if you liked him, now you really like him. I mean, he poured his heart out in that promo at the end of the end of the show. Oh, absolutely, and and that was also when Scarlett did the code red on oh, Jacob Fought too, which is still the most amazing thing I've ever seen in wrestling. <laughs> it was awesome, but but that's the thing about Cross. He he was so underutilized when they pulled him up to the main roster and, you know, the gladiator helmet, you know, he, he really should have like have an auction to sledgehammer that thing. If he can find it. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny cause I think that may be one of the biggest differences between WWE now versus then. I think if Vince McMahon is still in charge, I don't think they know they still don't know what they're going to do for Clash at the Castle. I think now that Triple H is in charge, they've had a plan going in this whole way, and they, including what they're going to do with Carrying Cross as far or Killer Cross as far as that's concerned. Right. And Brock Lesnar, I'm telling you, he's going to win the Money in the Bank again. <laughs> <laughs> well, more NXT exiles have made their returns to WWE as on Monday. The guy we were waiting for. Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Gargano. They apparently had him shoved in a crate somewhere to get him in the building because a lot of people didn't know he was even there. But kicks off Monday Night Raw, and he is back in WWE joining 
uh, many others. And the pro- if, if returned. and if they're really starting a program with him in theory, that's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I and mean, it was easy to hide him because the crate was kind of small. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let me let me ask you guys this question though: As good as Gargano is, and loved him at NXT, the the work that he did with Ciampa was phenomenal from start to finish with DIY and the trilogy of matches. But does Johnny Gargano play on the main roster? Because as Joe mentioned, you know he's a smaller guy, terrific wrestler. Great ring psychology, but the size, you know, is he is is there going to be an issue with Johnny Gargano being a main event player in WWE? Can he do it? Absolutely. And I say that because he is this version of, of he's now WWE's new version of Daniel Bryan. Wow, that is some heavy praise. Because I think I I don't think Gargano is necessarily at that level yet, but I think he can get he can still get there. I think he's just hitting his prime right now. And so I absolutely think he can be because I think he has that skill and that talent. Joe, how do you feel about Johnny Gargano? I'm not the hugest fan of Johnny Gargano, but the thing is, Triple H reminds me a little bit of Paul Heyman in his thinking. You know, in ECW, the reason guys became successful, and there were a lot of undersized guys that were made out to be a little bigger than they were. Like Mike Awesome was nowhere near the size that you would have thought he was because Paul Heyman would accentuate everybody's strengths and hide the weaknesses. RVD became a star, but he never talked, really. He wasn't a talker. He just couldn't talk. And Triple H will take the best of Johnny Gargano and put it out there. And, you know, he is this super underdog that people kind of got behind. You know, Sami Zayn's not a big dude, but look at Sami Zayn and the success he's had, you know, put in situations. And I think in WWE you will succeed if they want you to succeed. That despite situations, Happy Corbin will get 500 chances for some reason. (laughs) And they're all against Ricochet. (laughs) You know, and it's mind-boggling. It's like I always used to think of that about Albert back in the day. And obviously, how well-liked is he? He's now running the uh, NXT training thing. So when somebody wants to get behind you, they will give you the push. And if it doesn't work, they will give you a different push. And they will try again and try again. And Johnny Gargano had a huge, you know, time in NXT under Triple H's leadership. And I'm pretty sure Triple H will bring him to the main roster and not, you know, put him in a match against Omos and get squashed in a minute and a half. My one concern that I'm just going to throw out there, and let me see if, if you guys agree with this or not, is bringing in all of these NXTers that Vince got rid of. Is, it, is he doing too much too fast with the NXT guys? Is is he incorporating them too quickly and maybe should have staggered this out a little bit more? Or is he just that anxious to maybe clear the board, get some of these other guys that weren't performing well and ladies and say, you know what, I had some great people down here. They're my people. I'm putting them in. That's it. I, I just I it almost just feels like you're you're recreating the black and gold NXT brand in on the main rosters. And I I I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good thing or not. Do you, you know I, I what disagree I mean? because what you got to understand is a guy like Cross was ready for the main event, was uh, ready I, for for yeah. the main thing. A Keith Lee, a Shane Strickland, Hit Row. Those guys came up. They 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 showed up on one show. So we also talked about how so many of those guys, like Road Dog, came back, which. I figured it had to happen. Yeah. But a lot of these guys, like they're talking about Jonah. Well, Jonah signed in New Japan. There's so many guys that have signed elsewhere. So there's only so many guys Triple H could bring in. And it's not like there's 35 guys. It's Dexter Loomis. It's it's Cross. It's Road Dog. You know, it's Hit Row. But there's not really anybody left because we were thinking in our heads, who could it be? Who could it be? And there just isn't that many more guys. And he's gonna, if he's gonna fail, uh, he needs to fail with his guys, not with Vince's guys. There's still so. one name out there that, and it's not even really an NXT guy that 
I think everyone's still waiting on, and that's Bray Wyatt. Yeah, and the rumors are going crazy that he's about to sign a multi-million dollar deal. So, as well, he should. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the fact that even more so. I mean, getting rid of Strowman made sense just because the money he made, but it was ridiculous because he had just came off a championship match. But getting rid of Bray Wyatt made no sense because he was selling merchandise, he was doing everything he needed to do, and yet Vince still wouldn't wouldn't give him the push and got rid of him. Yep. And by the way, we're, I, I, and I'm only, yeah. Bray Wyatt isn't everybody's cup of tea. You know what I mean? It's like that supernatural thing doesn't flow with certain people. So if uh, Kevin Dunn decided he didn't dig it and he was in Vince's ear, you know, sometimes the guy that kind of got kind of wacky. You know, and not in a good way. And sometimes it was it was crazy enough out there, but it was was awesome. But I think with Triple H bringing Bray Wyatt back, you know, here's a guy who was a main event guy. You know, here was a guy people went nuts when Goldberg beat him in Saudi Arabia. Like, what is they doing? So you know, plus he's got the lineage of the family and, and all that other stuff. And obviously, there was a reason Bray Wyatt didn't sign elsewhere. So I can't see him not coming back to WWE. Yeah, I, I would agree wholeheartedly. And, of course, we're on the Mark Hoke Show here on KDWN 101.5 FM, 720 AM. We are the talk of Las Vegas. Just having a great time. I'm talking pro wrestling. I'm Mark Hoke along with Andrew Fishfain and Joe DeFalco. And, you know, we're seeing some other ladies from NXT making a move. But I, I think this is going to be intriguing for Monday. Because I think we had all assumed that the Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament was going to wrap up at Clash of the Castle. I thought it did. But it is wrapping up on Raw as we're going to have uh, Io Sky and Dakota Kai taking on Aaliyah and uh, Raquel Rodriguez. I mean, this is going to be, uh, uh. Uh, I, I, you know, and I'm not, yeah, and I'm not that thrilled about that match itself. But what I'm more wondering is, does this lead to a return of Naomi and Sasha Banks? At Clash of the Castle. I was going to say, do they show up tomorrow night or Monday night? Yeah, I guess it is tomorrow night. Do they show up tomorrow night and challenge the winner for a match at Clash of the Castle, or do they just show up at Clash of the Castle? Yeah, because there's only five matches at the moment on on the card. So they've still got some spots to fill on this thing. I'm extremely excited about the tag team match. It's it's two tag teams who universally have done so much (laughs) in this business. It's like watching the Midnight Express against the Rock and Roll Express again. It's it's the Bailey gang. That's that's all this is. This is promoting you know, uh, the new Bailey stable. And it, it, to me, it's a useless title. It's like so you know, they got so many women. It's like eh, how many how many belts do we have to have? <laughs> yeah, but I but I think I will say they, they, I will say this. I think the Triple H will do at least try to do these titles justice. I agree. I think he will at least promote them more. And, because that was the whole argument that Sasha and Naomi had. What are you doing? Why are you making us wrestle singles matches when we committed to doing this tag team and trying to make these belts something special? And they, they've made Raquel Rodriguez look like a monster. Oh, I yeah. mean, what she did, she basically was, she was like, she won a handicap match on Friday. Yeah. And to answer your question is because we told you to. That's why you were going to work singles matches. Because... We're telling you to. We pay you to do what we tell you to do. And for some reason, they feel they're above that. Well, we want to make these titles special. Well, we, we, this is what we need right now. Are, are you a team player or are you not? You know, WWE is also good for that, too, to see how people react to things. Yeah, I, well, and I agree. I I think they should have just gone with it. And you can find a way to... Could, could have found a way to incorporate that situation into what you were trying to do and make it something bigger than what it what they thought it would be. You know, a lot of times when, when promoters come to wrestlers and say, I want you to do this, and they look at you like you're nuts, but you have a plan, right, Joe? I mean, there's there's something bigger that you're trying to do, and yeah. and they, you know, they didn't see it and they walked out the door, which, you know, I disagree with. I, I didn't like when Lesnar walked out. You almost walked down a SmackDown either. That wasn't right. I mean, it's it, the same thing. There's there's tenure. People have to earn what they are going to going to get. When a Hammerstone comes up to me and says, "Hey, 
I know this is what you want to do, but these are my concerns. Then I'm going to pay attention because Hammerstone has been with me for nine years. He's become a superstar in the business. He's got a lot of clout. I'm going to take his opinion way more than I am the guy who's been wrestling for me for eight months and because he wrestled in MMA, thinks he's better than somebody else or a Phil Baroni telling me, well, why would I do that? I, 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 can, I can destroy him in a real fight. And it's like, well, this isn't a real fight. And every individual is, is different. Now, yeah, I guess Sasha more so than Naomi maybe has earned more of the right. She's done way more as champion and being spotlighted. And maybe it didn't go the way she wanted it to go. But we've also seen and heard of her having these issues on numerous occasions. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to take all of that. In, uh, a good leader is going to take everything into consideration. And you know, if, I, I don't know if history is going to look back on this as this being the right decision, because if you ask Stone Cold Steve Austin what his biggest mistake in his career was, he'll tell you it was walking out of, of – uh, what was it? Two thousand in two thousand one, when he left because he didn't want to job the job. He, he didn't want to do the. He didn't want to give up to Brock Lesnar, right? And, because he felt, and a guy of his tenure felt that there was no rhyme or reason for it, and it should have been used in a special moment for Brock to go over on. Him. Right, but Steve, but, but Austin still says that's the dumbest thing he's done in his career was walking out. And I think that right, and and I think he was okay with the reasoning for why he wanted to do it. Now, maybe because he walked out, they couldn't massage it to where it worked out to where it would have worked. But if Happy Corbin's like, "There's no way I'm going to lose to Ricochet again today," and they're like, "Oh, okay, well we'll have you win this week, and we'll have you win next week." When John Moxley, if that's the reason, well, I didn't want to lose, just lose to Punk. Well, how about we do the match here and I win? And they're going to be like, well, we want to keep Moxley happy. You know, he's a little he's a little out there. He's one of our main guys. Let, let's appease him. Yep. Yeah. But it, 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 it all it, depends on who the person is. There, there are certain people that haven't earned that right. Right. It, it is it is very tricky when you are stepping on the boss's toes like that. But, you know, of course, that's what talent relations is all about in, in these companies. You know, where you get a chance to, to air and, the grievances. And, right, and when you and have a weak-headed talent to... relations like John Laurinaitis, that's going to be the problem. <laughs> I don't know about weak. Stubborn might be a better word for Laurinaitis. Well, but he'll but... just say, well, yeah, but well, Vince said that. Exactly. You know, yeah. he, he, won't, he, he, he won't deny or accept responsibility either way. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to accept responsibility right now, guys. You know I'm going to ex- accept responsibility for? I'm going to accept responsibility for making sure that you guys all have a great breakfast today and some great dinner as well. I need you to get over to Family Soul Restaurant right now. Okay? Right now, the breakfast menu, oh, my God, shrimp and grits, catfish and grits. And, of course, during the week, you've got the catfish, the hot links, the fried chicken, the whole deal, all the great sides you're used to from, well, really the best soul food restaurant in Las Vegas. And if you go over there and you mention KDWN, you're going to get a shot to have the People's Choice special, which is catfish, yams, and greens, fifteen ninety nine. I mean, it is a great place, and Dan and the family do a wonderful job taking care of you when you go in. Uh, you will, trust me, you're going to enjoy it a lot. 2300 North Rainbow Boulevard, number 108. Uh, in Las Vegas, just off the I-95 exits, kind of between Cheyenne and Lake Mead, whichever one you want to hit, head on over there and have some great food. And I know, Fish, you've been over there, too. You loved it. Uh, Catfish was amazing. Yeah. Hot pepper, hot hot pepper. Hot lemon lemon pepper catfish. catfish. Oh, dear Lord. Something else. Do they got hush puppies? Uh, I can't remember if they have hush puppies off the top of my head, but they've they've, they've got some pretty good stuff. The soul rolls, man. Oh, it's like an egg roll with... Yams and greens in it. Oh my God, fantastic. So get on over. And of course, you can check them out at familysoulrestaurant.com. All right, everybody, stick around. And when we come back, more from WWE. We're going to talk about the clash at the castle coming up on Saturday. Stick around. We'll be right back. 
I'm Mark Hoke, and I've got to tell you about the incredible Family Soul Restaurant. They're the only soul food restaurant in Northwest Las Vegas, and simply put, they're the best in the city. Dan and his family have always treated me like I was a part of theirs every time we come in, and we never leave hungry. Start off with the amazing appetizers like their mac and cheese crab balls, crispy wings, and Dan's soul rolls. Then dive into Family Soul's dinners with homemade catfish, hot links, and fried chicken with all the amazing sides you could ever want and finish it off with homemade peach cobbler and banana pudding. Plus, they're now open for breakfast Friday through Sunday, too. So head on over to Family Soul Restaurant right now at 2300 North Rainbow Boulevard, Suite 108, just off the Lake Mead and Cheyenne exits of I-95. Check them out at FamilySoulRestaurant.com or call 725-205-5085 for hours in their menu. Mention KDWN and get the People's Choice Special of Catfish, Yams, and Greens for just $15.99. It's food for the soul and the family, Family Soul Restaurant. When it comes to having the right attorney in your corner, you want to have a proven winner on your side, and Russell Dutch Boyd of VegasCouncil.com knows how to win in Las Vegas. Boyd graduated at 18 years old from law school and is also a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. And no matter what legal challenges you're facing, Boyd will help you through it all. As a litigation attorney, he covers multiple areas of law, including personal injury, business law and startup, cyber law and crypto clients, and whatever else you might need to navigate the legal waters of Las Vegas and beyond. Just visit VegasCouncil.com to set up your free initial consultation today. That's Vegas, C-O-U-N-S-E-L dot com, and let Dutch Boyd help you win today. Once again, that's Russell Boyd at VegasCouncil.com. One oh one five FM, seven twenty AM, K Don, the talk of Las Vegas. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. Yeah, that's me. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's a double dip on Sunday for us as we got an extra hour today. So we are breaking it all down in the world of pro wrestling. Andrew Fish Fane, how you doing? I'm here. See, now, that was Enzo. That was definitely Enzo. And Joe DeFalco from Future Stars of Wrestling. Go to FSWVegas.com and say hi to everything he's got going on. Joe, how are you feeling? Yeah. Are you, you got your pants on yet? Uh, not yet. <sighs> Unbelievable. And I play better online poker in my underwear, so. <laughs> God help us. That is so stereotypical. Yeah, it gives you a whole new, uh, new meaning uh, to flopping the nuts. Oh, stop it. I no. won the biggest pot I've ever won in uh, online poker a week or two ago, Fish. No, that's pretty cool. But, of course, there's something better you can do with your computer, by the way. If you want hey, to get hey, that. hey, 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 yeah. this is a family show. Oh, well, hey, now. You can get into some automated day trading oh, so using automated nuts. day trading software from our friends at Trading Made Easy. Of course, Trading Made Easy has been doing this for five years now, helping people with cash in their pockets. <laughs> We all know the uh, the out of control inflation, gas prices are hitting everybody hard. So why not just do something different? Get rid of that nine to five job. Head over to tradingmadeasy.com. It's so simple. You only need one E in there. Or you can give them a call at 800 971 4160 and sign up for a free live trading webinar right now. Check it out. See if it's for you and, you know, make some money and have a great time doing it. You know, and the. At home, just like Joe's doing right now. So, once again, it's tradingmadeasy.com. Call 800-971-4160. All right. Well, we had SmackDown this week, too. And, you know, the thing that I was most excited to see. Sami Zayn? No. No. Gunther and Sheamus standing off in the middle of the ring. Now, the fighting around it was a little, a little cheesy. I thought that, I thought that, yeah, it was, but at the same time, I thought it was just very cool because the intensity between the two of them was absolutely there because they're, they're sitting there staring at each other while Butch and uh, Ridge Holland and, and Kaiser are all fighting all the way around them. Oh, they need Imperium back. they got to get the team together. Get Eichner back. Get get the boys, that tag team back together. But, there you but, go. There, there's a guy that we hadn't talked about that Triple H liked a lot, Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, we need we need to get Imperium back together and and finish that job. But 
I have to say this. That match at Clash of the Castle, somebody's going to be in some pain after that one's over. I mean, that is going to be a hard-hitting match. And I would imagine, odds-wise, that's probably one of the closer matches odds-wise. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I should pull that up. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. You, know, I'm, I, you guys know I was a big Walter fan and now Walter, now Gunther fan. And him wearing the Intercontinental title, I think he's going to win the match. But this is this is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, the, you take you take the Dragon Off match that that Walter had with him, and I think you're going to up that like by twenty. The it's only awesome. reason why Gunther should win the match is because it does Sheamus no good to win the match. Yeah, you got to keep the Intercontinental. I I really like where they have the U.S. title and the Intercontinental title right now. Let Lashley and Gunther just tear some people apart for a while. And yeah, that's a that's a big win for Gunther. He's got to he's got to go over Sheamus. You know, he, he he's in that role now of where he needs to be putting over, you know, the hot commodities, the ones that they really want to push hard, and you know, let him do his thing. You know, Sheamus was a guy that you know I, I think they misused, even though he was a champion numerous times. He's kind of fallen into that. He's gone. He's back. He's heel. He's face. Like he's he's the modern day Big Show. <laughs> he was, and he was one of those guys that I really thought they pushed him too early, too quick, burned him out, and you know, and they had him. With, you know, the great tag team with Cesaro. I mean, the bar was was outstanding. But I thought he he was it was a typical Vince McMahon booking where you see somebody you really like and you just shoot him to the moon, and then all of a sudden. Yeah, that that those fireworks explode, and you're like, now what do we do? I thought his face run was too short, too. Yeah, I, I would agree. They just they, he hasn't been used to the capacity they could have. I mean, I would love to see him get one more run as world champion. I really would. Yeah, but who, at whose expense? I don't know. Somewhere down the road, sometime. Yeah, he's got to be rebuilt to the to that level. You know, it, it's like. They do that with so many guys that they put them in positions and they're big deals for a while, but then they kind of just get smashed to where it's like it's not believable for Sheamus to be the heavyweight champion anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the kid gets the new toys at Christmas and they're hot for a while and then all of a sudden... Yeah, there's a new toy real quick. And he goes back to you playing know. with Woody and Buzz. It's, it's not like it's not like it was like when we were younger and we would see especially in the NWA, the slow builds to somebody getting shots at Ric Flair, the slow builds to Starcade and so on. You know, I mean Magnum T is a guy that I you know, that I think about a lot when it comes to that. Uh that they took their time with him. I mean, if, if Vince McMahon would have gotten Magnum TA in that situation, he might have been the world champion in six months. Yeah, and, and Vince ruined it, and, you know, he allowed because he allowed people to be in his ear. There's no, and, and Cena, John Cena has even said this, there's no way Cena should have been able to beat Nexus at SummerSlam. Yeah. And I mean, it destroyed the push for into that entire Nexus group, and they could have lasted so much longer and done so much more with it. Well, and they, they, they made, the, Vince made a lot of mistakes, and I think that, it, 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 the WWE philosophy is I want a viral moment. I want to make a big splash. What can I do right now instead of thinking, what could I have done to have a continual splash down the road as opposed to that one big explosion? You know, that's you just know, I'd, I'd have cross smashed Seamus. You know, that's a big win for a guy like cross. Like, are you going to build this guy up or is he just going to get thrown into the, uh, to the deep water with Reigns and Drew. It's like the fans have to get behind something. And, he's, and he's, if he's thrown in the deep water, though, I still think he wins. He, I don't think he gets. He, I don't think he goes into the in the deep water to be fed to the sharks. And then, then just tossed aside. Well, and Cody Rhodes is still sitting out there too when he comes back. So you got to be a little bit careful here because the last thing you want to do is is give Cross that push and then take it away this, from then him. take it away from him right away when Cody's recovered. Now you, you got to be careful with this whole thing, and and hopefully Triple H will be wise enough. To well, I I still wonder if they're splitting the titles or not. Right, but the problem is, okay, they're announcing everything as the universal title on on next week. So how how can they 
you know, how how and where are they going to split the titles? You know, are they going to do Tuesday in Texas, you know, after Cross gets involved and they do a three-way for one of the belts? Or, you know, how does that work? Well, the, what, what I would imagine would happen is, say, McIntyre, they're, they're calling it the universal title right now. McIntyre wins the universal title at Clash at the Castle. He shows up on Monday with the universal title. Friday, Roman's Ra- Roman Reigns shows up and says, yeah, he has the universal title, but I still have the world heavyweight championship. Yeah, something along and those lines. And that's how they split it up. I, I think Reigns won't won't let go of both titles. Yeah, I think Reigns will hang on to the Universal title because they're how making. How are they big... announcing it as? Uh, it's, are, they, it's... are they announcing it as? You know, aren't they announcing it as it's it's the titles are on the line, not one of them. Yeah, they. I mean, they're calling it the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Right, so that so, would mean both belts. So yeah. they, they they can't say one of them. Yeah, wasn't I mean, on but, the but line. If, if you look at the wording, there's just saying undisputed Universal Championship. Well, but the, it's combined, so they're yeah. That's they they need to. They're going to have to do this down the road. But that, it's, but that it's, no, it's, but, it, but that's that's the whole heel angle of it. The heel going, yeah. You, all we said was the Universal Title. See, I am still the heavyweight champion because he's be, and he's being the heel because he's not letting go of both titles. Yeah, I I don't think McIntyre is going to win this match but well with that why don't we take a look at what's happening on that card at least at the moment we're not i i don't think this card's anywhere near filled up i mean because we've only got five matches there's the moment, seventy thousand but... people there how many matches are they going to put on the card more than five but they only have one more show to put matches on because they've already taped smackdown for next week yeah they have to take smackdown so we'll we'll see what happens at raw i'd imagine we'll press I, was, I was curious i saw that they taped smackdown but i hadn't seen the results anywhere yeah, and I don't want to say him on the air. I did look, but I I, I've seen the results. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, it too significant there. So, but uh, so here's where we are at with Clash at the Castle coming up. Seventy thousand people. That's amazing. Yeah, that, that is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be a Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. That is WWE's first major stadium event in the UK since the legendary 1992 SummerSlam at so Wembley Stadium. So it's been a while. Been a while. I, yeah, wasn't that the big show where uh, the Brooklyn Brawler beat the Red Rooster? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that event. Wow. All right, so here's what we have on the card at the moment. We mentioned that match for the Intercontinental title. It was Gunther taking on Sheamus in this one. And uh, I do have some betting lines. Give me one second. See if that's up here. They've got these all mixed up with the. Uh, I'm saying, where'd you find them? I was looking on Bet Online. They only had all out. Uh, the, I just popped them up right now. Gunther is a minus six hundred. Sheamus plus three fifty. Well, I guess then he's not as it's not as close as I thought. I'm going to go with Gunther. I, I, there's absolutely no reason to have Sheamus win this match. I would agree, Joe. Yeah, same thing. Uh, then we are looking at Riddle and Seth Rollins. As they try to settle this feud of death between the two of them, so, so trying to set the record for most consecutive pay per view losses, and he's on a roll. Yeah, yeah so, so, uh, Joe, you go first on that one. We've got uh, the odds, by the way. Rollins is minus one sixty five, Riddle plus one twenty five. Joe, who you got? Uh, I think they're going to keep the feud going, so I guess they got to have the heel go over so they can have the rematch on uh, Raw the next day. Oh, uh, I, 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 I think Riddle should win, but I, I can't see Rollins losing at yet another pay per view. No, they're not getting. Rollins is going to win this thing. It's, it, it's time for Seth Rollins to get a little bit of a rocket. He's another guy that should be contending for the world championship. No, I agree. And, and him and Reigns, I think him and Reigns are, are is bound to happen at some point soon as well. Absolutely. Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka will be teaming up to take on the Bad Bad Baileys as Bailey. Dakota Kai and Io Sky. And I don't understand why this match is there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I would say that the, the Bianca Belairs win this match. We are looking at odds on this one of Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky minus 450. Oh, yeah, they're winning easy. Then yeah. I got to put that faction together like that and have them lose the first time they work together. Yeah, I would agree. There's no way. There's no way. It's, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Dakota and EO are walking in with the women's tag team championships. See, there's another little trick there, too, that, and it's why I didn't understand why they put this match together. Because if those two win the women's tag team titles, they're not going to be able to defend them. Well, I mean, they could. 
But they well, why would they need you there? Are you going to have a match? They don't have to defend them. How many titles don't they get defended? Bailey pins Bianca Belair, and now they start their feud. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's that one. Uh, Liv Morgan, the SmackDown Women's Champion, will be taking on Shayna Baszler, and I am very intrigued by this one to say the least. But they have Liv on BetOnline.ag as the favorite. And a pretty decent one, a minus four fifty for Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler, plus two seventy five. And of course, by the way, if you didn't see it, Ronda Rousey got arrested for attacking our Adam friend Pierce. Adam Pierce. On I, I, I would say this: if this is truly the new age of WWE and they are thinking ahead, then I say Shayna Baszler wins this match, setting up Baszler versus Rowdy, Rousey, which is the match that people would want to see anyway. Joe. Yeah. I think the reason they would do the title change is because Baszler is a Triple H girl, and he's going to put his people in place. That would be the time to do it. You know, Shayna was supposed to reportedly get the title a couple different times, and Vince just didn't like her. Yeah, she was supposed so, to be Becky, I think. Yeah, so why why not make the, the wrong right and, and have her go over? But... You know, Liv went in. She she beats Rousey in the thing. They do the other. So it'd be kind of like early to take the belt off her. But I guess we'll I guess we'll see where we're at after after Saturday because I think it's hard to take the belt off her already because whether it's as a heel or a face, she's getting a big reaction coming out. I like Shayna Baszler in this one, and and actually for the reasons that both of you guys said. I think that long term it would be a better thing to do. Yeah, I think Baszler and Ronda Rousey would be a fantastic match to have. And on the other side, you know, Shayna Baszler once again a huge star in NXT came up to the WWE main roster, had the huge push, crushed everybody in that Elimination Chamber match, busted up Becky Lynch, and, and then, then all they of made a her sudden, a joke, and then they destroyed her. Yeah, they made her a joke. So I think that Triple H put her in here because she's winning the title. So uh, I think she's the best value so far for any of the underdogs, for sure. Uh, Plus 270 is pretty strong, and I think she's definitely got a shot. I'm pretty sure it hasn't been decided yet. So that makes me think, hey, plus 270 is a good number. Yeah, that's that's the underdog I'm taking on this card. And then the last match that is listed at this point, of course, is Roman Reigns defending the – conglomerate title, the undisputed <laughs> WWE Universal <laughs> Championship against Drew McIntyre. And on the odds for this one, we have, it's pretty close. Roman Reigns minus 170, Drew plus 130. It's probably the closest what, we've what? seen a championship match in a while here. So, Well, what's, what's cross? Not on there. <laughs> what do you mean he's not on there? He's not on there. Here's you know he, he might maneuver himself in there. I'm just saying. He, I'm, I'm telling you, and, and I know that you guys both disagree with me, but if you go back to 1992 at Wembley, they had British Bulldog win because it was at Wembley. They're gonna have Drew McIntyre win this match because it's his hometown. I mean, it's not his hometown, but it's the UK. It's it's where he is, and this is his reward for carrying from the pandemic. Drew McIntyre See, wins this match. Wow. That that that. I don't disagree with that, but if you recall, if Vince was still in charge, Drew would be destroyed in his home country. But <laughs> yeah. now that Triple H is there, I can, you know, I, I could see Drew. It's like he, he's been deserving of that championship in the sea, you know, the reactions he gets, and, and he did miss out. You know, he got to be the champ. He, he, he his. His live events were they had less of a draw than Diesel when he was the champion. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't and I, his fault. And I think that because it's seventy thousand people that will go absolutely nuts if he wins the championship. Yeah, they go crazy. It's got he be. wins the championship at Clash at the Castle. I'm still leaning Roman Reigns, but Fish wants to put a parlay on that. Should take yeah. a take a take a Baszler McIntyre on that. They don't let you parlay anymore because uh, it's wrestling. Well, well, two two good bets. For I, you. I guess the next question is: What matches do you think will be added? Is it going to be a street profit Usos versus Ricochet? Both count anyway. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh. Eva Marie and Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> yes, big oh. tag. 
Oh, God. Bring bring Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti in to defend the Triple H champ- Mixed Tag Team Championships. But, I mean, are, are they going to have an Usos t- t- defending the Tag Team Championship, Lashley defending the U.S. title? Not on there. Well, the U.S. Nobody title they yet. can do Monday because Lashley will be there at Raw because that's the Monday night show. I, I, I'd have to pull the spoilers real quick. You know, they, well, maybe There's they no spoilers for Raw yet. New no, Day SmackDown. versus the Viking Raiders. Yeah, that one's being built up. I mean, that... They're, they're, they're having have the match. They're going to have to have another match. They are having, by the way, a – give me a second. We, I, I won't tell everybody what happened, but there is a Viking rules match on Monday Night Raw between – On Monday Night Raw. Uh, Smackdown, 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 on the excuse, pre-taped Smackdown. Smackdown. On the pre-taped Smackdown yeah, between the Viking Raiders and I think I think the Street Profits and Usos have a tag team match again. Or it's going to be there's going to be like a tag team turmoil type match at Clash at the Castle, and I think Bobby Lashley defends at Clash at the Castle. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, him and almost. I can't wait to see it. Oh god, <laughs> maybe they could all just become MVP. maximum MVP. Every, everybody could all just just become a maximum male model, and we're all happy. Mansoir, Mansoir. Oh god. Oh, I, I think that's coming up there, Matt. Right. I'm sorry. The Max, uh, my my guy uh, Max Dupree. I guess they're going to finally wrestle. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying not to get into spoilers for SmackDown. On oh Friday. boy, it gave it away. I thought they already announced actually, it anyway. I, I did not, but um, I just yeah. Actually, I think I did give something away. Anyway, <laughs> Dominic Di- Di- Dijakovic needs to come back. That that would be nice. Um, what and- Lud- Ludwig Borga? What? <laughs> Spring back Tensai while we're at it. Why don't we do that? Anybody else you want to get back? Aldo Montoya. Yes, oh. uh, Yoshi Kwan was one of my favorites. Oh Lord, Booger Bastion. Yeah, we could do that all night. By the way, uh, did you know? Did you know that with Yoshi Kwan, he was actually Chris Champion, and they they basically uh, put something over his eyes to make him look uh, Asian. Oh, I didn't know I that. I did not know that. I didn't know that. That yes, was the- Harley Race managed him in WCW. He was part of the new breed. Uh, one of the guys got in a car accident, and then he came back as Yoshi Kwan, and he was uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and he was Japanese. I love me some Harley Race. I remember the new breed. They were a pretty decent team. I liked them. Yeah, they were, they were, they were on the rise quick. Their claim to fame was, I think, one of them got knocked out by Mark Gastineau in a, in a boxing match that turned out was rigged. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> whoops. I All am right. a fountain of information. Yes. Well, we got to wrap it up here, guys. Uh, but by what? the way, no more hour. I thought we were doing another hour. No, I can't. I can't preempt anybody else. But, oh, okay. But uh, NWA seventy four wrapping up tonight too. So if you want to check that out, there's a world title match with Tyrus taking on Trevor uh, Murdoch. So Tyrus. Be yes, Tyrus. Tyrus. Brodus Clay. Yes. All How right. does he have a job, that guy? I don't know. But anyway, thanks for listening to the Mark Hoke Show. Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Facebook, the Mark Hoke Show. Download those podcasts like you're doing all over the world at markhokeshow.podbean.com or all your favorite podcast outlets. Fish, thank you very much. Acknowledge us. Thank you as well. We will see you guys next week on the Mark Hoke Show. Should be a good one with all these pay-per-views. So we'll see you next time. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show. And download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today. And thanks for listening.